today. Mm. I was up all night basically with the Lord. Just uh, He was showing me things in the season about what's going on. And uh, it always, in that sense, comes out of the blue. But I have spent a lot of time in prayer. I am going to keep um, talking to you about the subject of prayer and the importance of it. Because uh, that's basically the answer to everything that we need to know and how to... Uh, Mm, how to get the way, how to understand the ways and the precepts and the orders of the of the Lord. So it's it's a it's a subject um, that we really need to um, uh, study much more and and really really grasp the depths of it. And if we study and read about people. Uh, the generals of God were back in time. We all see that they spend a huge amount of time in prayer and that uh, they also um, talk a lot about um, uh, everything starts with prayer. But today I, 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 I call this, this, this title for today, I call it a prophetic word for now and a rhema word for this season because um, it is a rhema word I'm going to share with you today. God gave me word uh, last night and and during the night. Uh, I've been praying a lot about, Lord, show me what's going on in the spiritual realm in these times. And, um, um, and the Lord put some scriptures on my heart and, and uh, he gave me some rhema words for now. I am going to read for you. Um, all right, let's start with uh, going into the scriptures. Um, I am in Isaiah. You can turn with me there right now, please. Isaiah 50, 57. And I am going to read from verse 7 to 13. Um, because we have to understand this is also especially addressed in, in regards to the importance of understanding not doing our own but really understanding um, um, understanding what it means that when we follow the precepts of the Lord and the importance of it what does it really look like in the eyes of the Lord when we do our own? I am going to read this for you. And Isaiah was, of course, addressing the whole theme around Israelites, the people of God. And uh, we are now the people of God. This word we really have to take into consideration. All right. Verse 7. Upon a lofty and high mountain you have openly and shamelessly said your idolatry idolatrous and ad, adulterous bed. Now a bed is a place where you um, where you are being unfaithful <laughs> with someone else even though it's a picture of uh, when you are married uh, and you're being uh, um, you're being with someone in the bed. That's the whole picture of why he's talking about the bed. Because it's about this idolatrous ways that we do our own, even though we are actually married to the Lord. This is all for people who, who are Christians, for people who, who want to walk with the Lord, and for people who are walking with the Lord. Even there you went up to offer sacrifice in spiritual unfaithfulness to your uh, divine husband. Behind the door and, and the doorpost, Post, you have set your idol symbol as a substitute for the scripture text God ordered. Uh, we can't make up our own rules. We have to follow the rules and, and what God is telling us. We can't uh, just do our own thing. 
deserting me. When we do that, we're deserting him. Deserting me, you have uncovered and ascended and enlarged your bed. We, when we do our own, we even make the bed bigger. It's a picture of uh, that it's hard for us to get out of. It's a picture of that it's um, uh, Mishaka. It's a picture of that we ooh, mm, that we um, mm, how can I put it mm, that we come further and further away for for understanding the ways of the Lord, and we don't see anything wrong with it. Actually, a nice big bed is is something that's really comfortable for the body, isn't it? Contemplate on these things. Read these scriptures for yourself. Just study them out. Enlarge your bed and you have made a fresh bargain for yourself with the adul adulteress and you loved their bed where you saw a beaconing hand, a wavering hand or a passion inflaming image. An image is not something that's real. <laughs> uh, look up Deuteronomy, where we see Deuteronomy 6 and uh, uh, 11, where we see what, these, what the Lord is addressing in, in this regard. What does it mean? Uh, and you went to the king of foreign lands with gifts. So we went to other gods and we gave them gifts. What is our gifts? The most uh, sacred part of ourselves on the inside, right? Our heart, our, our soul, our, our spiritual life, we gave to someone else. Um, or to Molech the God with oil and increased your perfumes and ointments. So um, uh, to Molech, the God with oil uh, and increased your perfumes and ointments, you sent your messengers far off and debased yourself even to Sheol, Hades, symbol of uh, the abysmal depth of the uh, degradation. I just want to go back here. Or to Molech, the God with oil, and increase your perfumes and ointments. That means that what is what is sacred for us that the Lord has given us, given us is our gifts. We give it away to someone else, and we let them use our gifts from the Lord. You see, um, the adversary has. Um, has his oil, has his spirit, has it's in that sense, uh, it's a picture and a and a copy paste of what what God carries as a trait, the ointments, the perfume. He has ointments, perfume, but they're all fake. But we have to understand and we have to study these things, and um, all of this comes from prayer understanding this you were wearied with the length of your way in trying to find rest and satisfaction in alliance apart from the true god yet you did not say there is no result of profit you found quickened strength we do that when we seek the things of the world we find quickened strength we all know this uh, we do something for a while or for a time or for a season and we were um, quickened in strength for a season. But it's not something that's going to last. Therefore, you went, you were not faint or heartsick or uh, pertinent. That's why we stay. That's why we uh, stay with uh, stay with the things of the world. We have to understand that... Um, it's not the same that what God provides is, is lasting and that he is faithful. Also, um, understanding in, in, this, in this scripture here that uh, there is the deceit 
then we, when we in a short time find strength in something from the other gods, from the world, uh, we tend to linger and when it, when it wears off, we tend to linger there and hope for the new wave to come in. This is, and then we try something else. You know this, a lot of people in new age, they try different things. You know, I, I know all about that. Try different things and they go from one thing to another. It doesn't even have to be in new age, but it could also be in the world. In the ways of the world it could be going from uh, putting your heart into to your job, to your money, to to your uh, all of your uh, friends, your family, putting everything within you in that. That can also be a God. Of whom you have been so afraid and in dread that you lied and were treacherous and did not seriously remember me. Of whom you have been so afraid and in dread is the fear of man. This only leads to the fear of man. Hmm. And did not seriously remember me, so we forget God. Did not even give me a thought. <laughs> Have I not been silent even for a long time? And so you did not fear me. So when God doesn't speak, I noticed this. When God doesn't speak, it's, we have to know this. We have to be really careful of not falling away from him. He does that sometimes. He can be silent and he's like, he's looking out to see what are they doing when I don't speak? Do they seek me even more? This we have to be aware of. Otherwise we drift off into um, um, it's eroding. It's little by little. We drift into the ways of the world in, in all these ways I just described for you. Very important. Uh, ask the Lord, is there areas where I'm not, you know, seeking your face, doing my own? I will expose your pretended righteousness, pretended something we pretend. <laughs> it can only be pretended because we know that the only one who carries true righteousness is God. It can never be placed anywhere else. Uh, and they will be exposed. Ask God to expose them to you. If you have any, where you pretend you're, you know, the flesh is like that. We would pretend we're all good and doing the right thing and all of that. The flesh is like that. The flesh is weak. It's so fickle. It goes from one direction to another all the time. You know this. You know your thoughts. You know, you know how it goes from one direction to another direction. And God will uh, expose our, our pretended righteousness. And, and then it says your doings but they will not help you. <laughs> they will not help. When you cry out, let your rabble collection of idols deliver you. God is mocking Israel here. Uh, hmm. But the wind shall take them all. A breath shall carry them away. That's all it takes. It's nothing. <laughs> Sila, we have to think about these things, right? But he, this is the encouraging, but he who takes refuge in me shall possess the land Judea and shall inherit my holy mountain. Hallelujah. Zion, also the heavenly inheritance and the spiritual Zion. There is a mountain here on earth that we will inherit and there is a mountain in heaven that we will inherit. Mountain of Zion. I just, I just love that. Isn't that such a great word? 
uh, everything the Lord has put out for us, everything is openly, but we have to take refuge in Him, in all our affairs. Go to Him. Don't do your own. And it's so subtle. You know this. It's a subtle thing in the flesh that tends to lead us and and the righteousness in in doing our own we justify ourselves this must be from the lord and and we have we can even have these thoughts going on yeah it sounds good you know it's it's right we can have all these arguments uh, even practical right arguments but that doesn't apply the only thing that applies here is did you seek God before you went and do something? We have to really get that. And then I'm, go I'm just going to jump here. I'm still in chapter 57. I'm just going to jump here. Verse 16, it says, For I will not contend forever, Neither will I be angry always, for if I did stay angry, the spirit of man would faint and be consumed before me. And my purpose in creating the souls of men would be frustrated. If God really showed us his wrath, <laughs> we're nothing. We have to read these scriptures. Because then we get the order right. And then the fear of God, the healthy fear of God arises within our hearts. And then God can use us. Then he can start pouring in. Then he can start confiding within us. Without the flesh going bananas, thinking that it's something. But we have to constantly, constantly I would say, go back to reading scriptures where it says uh, who we are. A lump of clay, a puff of dust, a broken piece of pottery. We have to remember these things. All right, two, three. Um, uh, verse... This is, this is, we also recognize all of this. You know this. How was your life before you met the Lord? What did you do? How many things did you do that you thought was a great idea? Um, um, life without the Lord. I just read for you, life without the Lord. You know this. We, see, we look in the world today. We look what's going on. We see the happenings in the world. We see the happenings in in friends and family. And we see the happenings in people who know the Lord. And we see the happenings in people who don't know the Lord. We have to know the difference. This is life without the Lord. This, read it again and again. Let the Lord show you. If there is any area in your life where you need to to turn around, to repent. Now I'm going to move into more, one could say, the promises of God. <laughs> hmm. This is um, still in Isaiah 56 and verse 7. It says, and all these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Hmm. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called a house of prayer for all peoples. So what are the sacrifices? In the old life, before we met the Lord, we had sacrifices. We did sacrifices, different kind of sacrifices we thought was right. Um, and here, the sacrifice for us now is giving the Lord our lives. That's the sacrifice. And, 
And when we grow in that, we give, uh, we give more of ourselves, if I can put it like that, to the Lord. It's like handing over, <laughs> bit by bit, everything from our lives to the Lord. It's like that with Him. Uh, and then he's, when we grow, he says, just give me that too, you know, and give me that thought too, you know, and give me that way too, and let me mold you in that area because my ways are better, you know, and, and give me that one too, you know, and I have a greater, I have a greater life for you than this that you're walking in right now. Um... Yes, you have the gifts, but let me show you where to use them properly. Uh, all of these steps with the Lord. It's a sacrifice for the flesh because every time we hand it over to the Lord, it's a bit strange. Uh, it's, a, it's a sacrifice and somehow the mystery of it is that it always seems a bit like a sacrifice. And yet we grow into becoming more and more comfortable with the sacrifice. But the mystery of it, it's always, it's always going to feel a bit like a sacrifice. The Lord is like that. Jesus suffered. Uh, there is the place of suffering in our walk with the Lord. Uh, we have to know these things. It's not any different from us. And yet, in the, in the sacrifice of, of Jesus for us, uh, we have to understand that he sacrificed with joy. This is the position that we come to more, walk more and more in depth in. That every time that the Lord asks us to sacrifice something, we do it with joy. Because on the other side, we see... The, work, the workings of his mighty hands in our lives. We see how he molds us and shapes us and everything. And how it always comes out and, and turns out for the better. This way we come to know more. And by this way, every time the Lord asks us to give up something, uh, it's not even a giving up. It can tear a bit in the flesh. Uh, but we know that his ways are better. I like that. Thank you, Jesus. So we have to understand these things. And we have to understand that um, it's a process. Most of the ways with the Lord is a process. Um, yeah, let me read here. I am going to skip now again. Verse, uh, chapter 58, verse 13. Now I'm going to move more into addressing the part of, of prayer in it. It says here, if you turn away your foot from traveling unduly on the sabbath from doing your own pleasure on my holy day and call this sabbath a spiritual delight the holy day of the lord honorable and honor him and in it not going your own way or seeking or finding your own pleasure or speaking with your own idle words <laughs> then will you delight yourself in the lord there is a delight. We, you know this. We are a delight to the Lord. Hmm. And I will make you to ride on the high places of the earth. That's nice, isn't it? It's a good promise. And I will feed you with the heritage promised for you of Jacob, your father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. But did you, did you notice in verse 13? And not going your own way, seeking or finding your own pleasure. <laughs> Purgation is important. And in prayer, there is a seeking out in prayer where you just wait for the Lord to show you. 
Lord, where am I drifting away from you? Where am I um, doing my own? Where am I speaking with my own idle tongue? My own idle words? Uh, even finding, where am I even try to find? Have you noticed that with the flesh? That it justifies our own actions? Notice that. That when you... When, when you start to justify why you should do something and it's not so bad, be cautious. The Bible says we need to walk cautiously. That's why we need to have ears to hear and eyes to see. Cautious. Pay attention. Every time justification is on the horizon, just stop. Pause. Just wait for him to show you whether it's from him or it's your flesh and the adversary is using that in your flesh. Uh, he's doing everything he can uh, to make you fall away from the Lord and just to fall so that you will be so ashamed. This is a rhema word. I can feel that. So that you will be so ashamed that you won't, that you won't come back to the Lord. There is no shame in Jesus' name <laughs> that can take you away from him. We have to know these things. Nothing can take you away from his love. Mm, nothing. No shame. No, in no regards to how shameful it was or whatever you've done, nothing can take you away from the love of God. I like that. Thank you, Jesus. That's so important. The adversary is always out to shaming us, uh, to putting us down and, and to making God up as somebody who is God like that. You know what I mean when I say it like that. Uh, the, the God who sits from above, you know, like that, and speak with the authority, like, you know these things. That's not God. That's not God at all. Um, first and foremost, he constantly seek, he pursues us with his love. That's why we have to read on uh, on a regular basis uh, what Jesus did on the cross. Because then we remember his love for us. Yeah, but you wouldn't do that and then disregard me over this. That's right, he wouldn't. But he will always try to help us to stop doing the things which is not healthy for us, uh, healthy physically or spiritually, right? Okay. F I'm in 59.17. It's been a while since I read this one. I, this, I read this at some point a lot. Let's go a little bit back to that right now because we need that in prayer. We need to understand what it means. Verse 17, 59, still in Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 17. For the Lord put on righteousness as a breastplate, a coat of mail, and salvation as a helmet upon his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing, was clad with seal. And furious divine jealousy Oof. as a cloak. The love for us, Shakara. The love for us, God has. Ooh. He is a jealous God, furious. He is furious with love for us. He's, it's, it's not like, oh, I love you. That's not, no, no. God is, ah, I'm out to get you. This, he's pursuing us with furious, jealous love. <laughs> Very different. I am, of course, talking about... I am going to read it all. Um, the full armor of God. Let's read that. Ephesians 6, verse 14. Please turn with me on that one, to that page, to that scripture. And stand therefore, hold your ground. 
Hold your ground. Stand still. <laughs> yeah, but I wanna. I said da 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 da, and it's not really, you know, you have all this stuff going on. Having tightened the belt of truth around your loins, we gotta know the word of the Lord. The belt upheld everything. Uh, um, everything of the armor, the clothes that the Roman soldiers would wear. It's essential. It, it held up the place to, uh, to the sword. If you did not have a belt on, you could not have the sword. Yeah, we have to understand these things. Just do a study on the full armor of God. Having tightened the belt of truth around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity, and of moral restitute and right standing with God. Hmm. Integrity. Hmm. First and foremost, integrity with the Lord. Hmm. I'm going to stay faithful to you, God. Everything I do, this is my own life. Everything I do now today, it cost me everything in my life. Everything. I lost the love of my life. I lost my friends. I, I, I lost many things. We have to think about these things. There is a price to pay. But the one that we receive is in no comparison to the ones that we lay, lay down. But there is a price to pay. There is a suffering in that. I am going to stay faithful to you, God. I'm going to keep my integrity to you, God. We have to... We got to rise up. This is time for warriors to rise for Jesus. It's not a time to sleep and have goofy pink Jesus. No, 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 no. It's time to rise up. And in right standing with God. And having shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability, the prompted and the readiness produced by the good news. We got to be ready. <laughs> we got to get up. Can you hear that? It's not a time. Ah, oh, it's nice. No, 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 no. We're not called to that. Remember uh, the disciples? I've been reminded a lot about that these past days. The disciples fell asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus told them to stay awake. And he said, lest you fall into temptation. The temptation is to fall in spiritual sleep. Way too many are in spiritual sleep. Get up. It's time for the warriors to get up. Time for the nation of Jesus to rise up. Time for the warriors of Jesus to rise up. Hmm. Uh, having shut your feet in preparation. Are you prepared? <laughs> are you prepared have, to face the enemy? Can you face the enemy? We can only face the enemy when we know Jesus. We can't face the enemy of ourselves. Then we get fear, right? Then we get fearful. Because we know we can't handle the situation. That's right. But the preparation is always about <laughs> knowing Jesus. It's always about this intimate relationship with him. Because then we know when the enemy comes, and he will. <laughs> when he comes, we have Jesus. We say, I have you. I have you. We just, it's got to be on your backbone, that one. I, Jesus, Jesus. We just go like that. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. That's the preparation. And it's got to be like this. It's got to be within us as the first reaction to the situation. What comes out of your mouth when you, when fear arises? Is it Jesus or is it, oh no. If it's, oh no, you got to do some more studying. More time with Jesus. If it's Jesus, Jesus, then you're really, you know, you're there. I like that. Lift up 
all over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all, it says, all the flaming missiles of the wicked ones. Quench all, not just some, all. Everything that the enemy comes and tries to attack us with, we can quench them all with our faith. Lord, I know that you will come through for me. I know that you are here. I know you are with me. I know you are behind me. I know you are walking next to me. I know you are above. I know you are below me. I know you are within me. I know you walk before me. I know you are with me, Lord. That's faith. Pray at all times. <laughs> On every occasion, in every season. Have you noticed the flesh is like, hmm, things are going well now. I can just relax a little bit. No. That's the place to pray even more. Even more. Because for that exact same reason, the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. In every season, in the spirit, with all manner of prayer and in treasury, to that end and keep alert and watch with strong purpose. Keep alert and watch with strong purpose. Requires something, doesn't it? Not a time to sit down and, oh, that's nice. No, 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 no. And perseverance. We keep on keeping on. Paul said, he didn't say, Lord, take me out of the situation. He said, Lord, fill me with strength. If you don't have perseverance, pray, fill me with strength, Lord. Interceding in behalf of all the saints, God's consecrated people. That's what we do. Praying for each other in this manner. When I can get on, on to be arise and staying a lot, staying awake, spiritually awake, there is a spiritual realm that's breaking through for others, uh, uh, for making it easier for others, one could say. But we don't lean on others. Yesterday I was out walking, and the Lord put on my heart, in these times right now where we can't meet more than 10 people and that's the invitation right now far too many are leaning on the anointing in the church uh, the corporate anointing let me see where I wrote that down uh, there, because there is a, a power in, in corporate anointing but we, we got to have that ourselves. We don't go to church to, to get a fix. That's the fix. We go to church being full of power. This is church. And when we all come with full of power in church, can you imagine a church? That's what Jesus called us to. He did not call us to go to church and just lean in on the corporate anointing and just hang out a bit and then go home and pray a little bit. You are the one that God is looking for to be full of seal and power and to be full of furious love for him. That's what he called us, calls us to. You see the traits of Christ being furious and full of seal and power of love for that he has for us, we become full of for him and full of for each other. And it's not about um, um, in that sense, 
It's not about, in the sense, being loud. It's, it's, a, it's an inner position. But we have to know these things. We really have to get this. When you come to church, you have a responsibility. Are you full of power? Did you pray? Did you seek the Lord on behalf of the church? Or do you think maybe that the others in the church are the ones to do it? If so, and you think I'm not worthy enough or whatever reason that you can come up with, let me tell you, it's not from God. God called us all in church to be full of power and seal. I want a church like that. I want a church where people know these things and live it. They pray, they spend time with him and then come to church full of power and seal. Otherwise, you're just going to drain the minister in your church. That's all you're going to do. And then you get upset with them and why is nothing working? And then you start blaming them. Then you have all these issues going on. Your responsibility is to spend time with him. Fill yourself with power and love. The Holy Spirit is the same. It's, you don't have less than the others. It's not like that. It's the same quantity of Holy Spirit on everyone, within everyone, who is full of Him. All right? I like that. Because far too many are leaning in on the corporate anointing. These are the times for us to seek His face even deeper and more because we can't meet Personally, for me, I'm cool. I miss you guys. You know that. But my time with Jesus, I pray a lot these times. I, I, I'm seeking his face and he gave me great, great. God always reward that. He gives me, he gave me great, great, great revelation. On this whole season and this whole time we're in, I am ecstatic about it and I can't wait uh yeah but i want to have words like you know i want to i want that to pray 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 wait pray wait 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 on the lord wait wait <laughs> let's move away from the corporate anointing the anointing is not about that the people can come to church and then plug it in in the corporate anointing and then go home it's not like it's that's not from god the corporate anointing on the day of Pentecost, everyone prayed. It was not like two people praying and the rest was just sitting and knitting. That's not, no, 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 no. They were all praying. <laughs> they were all in unity to pray, to seek his face. And what happens? The fire of tongues came down. Now we have Jesus on the inside. We have the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy, Holy, beautiful Spirit of God on the inside. That power. That's, that's the place with the power. That's in the Holy Spirit. And when we all come to church prepared, can, can you hear it? We come prepared. We come full of zeal and Fire and power. <laughs> mm. I hear in time harvest church. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, let me finish up with this last one here and then I'm going to read for you the words that the Lord put in my heart. Chapter six, chapter 60, still in Isaiah, verse 1. It says, Arise, I've, I also experienced this a uh, rhema word for now, Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Arise to a new life. God has called us to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Hallelujah. Shakaba. Okay. That was such an amazing word. Just read that for yourself a couple of times during the day. Then you're going to be you're going to be like this. Uh -huh. 
Oof, can feel that. So I, I talked to you about there is a season now for le for learning to pray and to cess your prayers, uh, being an intimate, close fellowship with the Lord. This is the season. Go low, see again. Go low, see again. If one lacks the power in own prayer life, now is the season. These things I just talked to you about. The Lord is pouring out in these times more depth to the individual prayer life in order to return strong in fellowship in church. This is what I just talked to you about. Way too many are dependent on the power of the corporate anointed prayer, leaning on others to do the work. Listen to what he's saying. I need warriors for the end time church and harvest. The church is asleep, has become a dull, has become dull because people are leaning uh, on others to do it. Remember, says the Lord, you are the other. <laughs> you. <laughs> I need you to wake up and recognize the power of prayer in which I have installed in all of my children because my spirit is within them. Prayer comes before everything else, before movement, pray, before speaking, pray, before talking, action, taking action, pray, before coming, pray, before going, pray, before making, pray, before it all, pray, before everything. Prayer is the movement of my spirit. Prayer is all. Is all. Everything is is moved before prayer. Seek my face now. Wait for me in the hours of praying. Listen for the still small voice. Let me please just fill in that gap. Remember Elijah, I'm going to read that scripture for you. First King 19, 11. And he said, the Lord, go out and stand on the mount before the Lord and behold, uh, and the, uh, and behold, the Lord passed by and a great strong wind rent the mountains, broke it in pieces broke and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle stillness and a still, small voice. Way too many lean in on the earthquake, the fire, and it's all about the loudness of the church. Still, small voice. When Elijah heard the voice, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out. He knew God, right? Wrapped his face in the mantle. Everything that you've given me, Lord, my mantle, everything that you put on me, Lord, everything, the gifts that you've given me, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to go low, Lord. I'm going to hide my face in it. Humble. And stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? <laughs> Still small voice in prayer wait low i'm gonna say this a million times i want every one of you to get this listen for the still small voice of the lord 
Then the Lord said, listen, the words you put on my heart. Listen for peace. Listen for softness. I will teach you. I will make known to you my precepts and orders. I need prayer warriors, not people on stage. Elijah was not on stage. There was nobody there. Nobody watched him. It was him and God in a cave. In the secret place, the cave is a picture of the secret place on the inside. I need people who knows how to win a battle. That's in the secret place, beloved. By turning their face toward me. I need people to step down from the throne. The throne is only mine to sit on. Spend time with me now. Now is always a good time. <laughs> now is always near. I just really love that when he speaks like this, the Lord. Pray constantly. I read that for you. Without ceasing. Ephesians 6, 14. Keep your inner eye and ear on me always. <laughs> By this you will walk in spiritual awakening and not fall asleep. I need a mature bride. Pray unceasingly by having your ears and eyes on me. Isn't that a great word? Thank you, Jesus. I just love that. I hope you are just encouraged just as encouraged as I am, because I truly am. Uh, last night, the whole night, the Lord shifted between showing me uh, the nature of Him and the nature of the other. And we have to know. Many people say, I want to see more... Um, walking more glory with God yeah but are you also ready to be to be exposed to more revelation of what's really going on behind the curtains this is the calling and only through him on the inside we can bear to witness it all there is such disturbance in the darkness that is of such dread. Uh, we need to know Jesus. We need to constantly know how to, in our daily walk, in everything we do, be really, really close to Him. There has to, we have to understand that our lives is not about when I am at home and praying with Him. And when I am walking around at home, I'm speaking with him, I am um, in, um, interacting with him, I am putting my face and putting my, my head on his bosom, I am I'm trusting on him. And then I go out in the world and then I just do my own. The shift must end. We can't, we can't live like that. That's having one foot in the world and one foot in the church. One foot uh, with Jesus. That's not a consecrated, holy place or church, life walking with God. Everything has to be given to Him. That's why we give it all to Him. That's why we... That, can you hear how important it is with prayer? Everything comes from prayer. The Lord just said it. The Lord, I just read the words for you that the Lord put on my heart. And the Bible is full of it. The Bible is full of it. Uh, people constantly want a new word. Can I get a new rhema word or prophetic word? Do you know the Bible? It should actually be more than enough. <laughs> just read the word. Uh, study. Pray, wait, still, still, small voice of the Lord. Wait, not an earthquake, not fire, ah, 
not a lot of hype. Just this still small voice with Jesus, Holy Spirit in the cave, in this small seclusive cave, Song of Solomon talks is all about prayer life. These two people being in, falling, the one falling in love with the other and the other falling in love with the one and growing deeper and deeper into that relation. It's us. It's, it's a picture of prayer life. It's us. Deeper, 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 deeper. Paying attention, paying attention, paying attention. Eyes to see with, eyes to see with. Wow, thank you. I could talk forever, you know me. Um, I feel so blessed or that we are, that we can come to Jesus, that we can, that we're walking with the Holy Spirit and that um, we have the Father Almighty Father, we have a mother and a father and family in Jesus. <laughs> Such a blessing. Remember you're not an orphan. Remember you, your inheritance. Read the scriptures again today uh, that I read for you. Um, remember what the Lord has given you. Remember your inheritance. Remember the scriptures I read for you today. And just pray unceasingly. Pray. If you don't know what that means, pray. <laughs> Ask him. Pray. Pray deeper, deeper, lower. Wait for him. It takes time, beloved. Just wait, wait, lower, 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 lower. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, but the flesh gets irritated and it itches and it wants to do all kinds of things and it's hungry. Just wait, you know, if you if you were out, if the flesh was out, you would stand in line for hours to get something that the flesh really wanted. <laughs> wait, we can overcome. We are overcomers of everything. Hmm? Overcomers. What an awesome word that the Lord has given us today. Thank you, Jesus. I pray, Holy Spirit, I pray, Father, that these words of today will implant deeper and grow deeper, deeper, deeper in our hearts, Lord, because there is always more, Lord. I thank you, Jesus, that you are here amongst us. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Father, for you have a perfect plan. I thank you that you are executing your plan and help us, Lord, to become great warriors for you, Lord. There is always... Uh, more that we can overcome within ourselves in order to come closer to you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will show each of us, bring revelation to us, Lord, what it is for each of us, Lord. Father, I ask Jesus, I ask that you will uh, oof, let your spirit fall right now. Let your spirit fall right now on people. Shakaba. Let your spirit fall right now. Would it would greater mm, would greater um, mm, weight, Lord? Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I ask that you will bless this day, bring favors and blessing upon our lives. Thank you that your that your countenance is looking down on us, Lord. That your face is shining upon us, Lord. That you're actually smiling to us, Lord. Whoa smiling because you're pleased with us and that you love us so much lord mm. all right thank you everyone have a blessed day in jesus name amen